Hey everybody, what's going on? We've got a brand new FSD beta update here, FSD beta 11.4.6. So I haven't turned it on yet. We're gonna go for our first drive together. Let's see how that goes. Take me to Coit Tower. So we'll go to Coit Tower for our first drive. Let's maybe try and take a more challenging route. And uh, let's go, but before we go, Huge thanks to our sponsor, Abacus AI. Abacus AI is an end-to-end -end ML ops and AI platform. You don't have to manage your own infrastructure. You can just upload your data and train your own custom models right on their platform. They help manage the data, clean it, train on it, and then even deploy your model. So go check out abacus.ai. All right, let's head out to Koi Tower. So I've turned on FSD and we are off. Looks like we got a green light, so we're gonna continue through. Very smooth, not accelerating too much and scaring me like it used to do in some of the very early versions of FSD. It's become a very smooth, cautious, careful driver. Looks like we've got some pedestrians who are crossing the crosswalk right now. So we're going to wait for them to finish crossing the crosswalk before we continue. We've also got another car there. And now that it's clear, we're going to make a right turn. Very good. You know, I have to say, I've tried Waymo, I've tried Cruise, I've tried Tesla FSD. Tesla's better in every way that matters. They can do more with less. And I love that I can have it on my actual car and that I can take it anywhere I want to go. The other self-driving service I have access to here, Cruise, I can't use right now because it's daytime. They only open after 9 p.m. So that just makes Tesla so much more useful, even though I do have to be here to supervise. All right, full NHTSA approved stop all the way to zero. You're not gonna see human driver stop like that, only robots. And it's got to be a safety improvement that's got to reduce crashes. Otherwise, why would they even tell us to do that? All right, now we're going to make a left turn here. There's some pedestrians walking around, but it noticed that it was clear. Oh, there's cars coming. There was even somebody coming on the right side, walking up to their car door. In the past, that might have caused it to slam on the brakes when it saw that pedestrian coming, but it handled that very smoothly, realizing that they weren't gonna be in our way. Right now, we got a right turn. Very good. Looks like there's a stop truck up ahead on the other side of the road. It's offsetting away from that. Very good. Creates a very smooth, comfortable experience. Stopping to zero, continuing. Another stop truck in the lane to our right, parked in the shoulder. And now we're crossing Van Ness. So far so good. I mean, I have to say, disengagements are getting pretty rare. They're really doing this with just computer vision. It's kind of incredible. They're actually able to create a piece of software that can drive better, drive more places, and actually has less requirements than anybody else. Okay, we got a green light. There's a guy walking really close behind us, so I think it kind of... Uh, slow down for someone behind us, which is kind of an interesting choice. I think it just decides to act more cautious anytime there's people around. Okay, slowing down for the speed bump, that's good. Could have slowed down a little bit more for the first one, but for the most part it was great. Went down to about 17. Okay, now we're going up this uh, very steep road here. There's a road work ahead sign, so that sounds like it could potentially uh, present some challenges depending on what type of road work they're doing. Okay, doing a very good job here. Some knocked over construction signs. 
and now we have to make a left turn here onto Chestnut. Oh, there's the construction, okay. Doesn't seem to really be impacting us. Okay, it's creeping very carefully. There's someone also trying to make a right on the other side. Very good. I'm impressed. Okay, now there's a lot of pedestrians over there. I think they're trying to go to Lombard Street. Damn tourists. Okay, here's a guy getting out of his car. We offset for that. And now get back over to the right side of the road. Very good. Now we're waiting for all these pedestrians to cross, but it starts creeping. I like that. I don't like when it would just wait at a dead uh, standstill for pedestrians because that would create a situation often where, um, okay, here's someone coming head on, so it's slowed, that's good. Yeah, that would create a situation often where, uh, you know, it would never get a chance to go because people would see you stop and they would stop yielding to you. So even though there's pedestrians and you're waiting for them, it's good to kind of assert yourself and start creeping into the road so people know, okay, this person's trying to go. So you can see here, there's people. We're already starting to creep. We're asserting ourselves. We're communicating to the people behind us that we're not just stopped. We are trying to go. And we're communicating to the other crossing traffic that this person is trying to get across. So really good how it's starting to do those kind of more human-like behaviors rather than driving like a robot and just slamming on the brakes and stopping every time you see a person. Okay. Good. Very good. Now here's a tricky intersection. I've seen it get confused at this intersection with Columbus before uh, because of how the traffic lights are. They're arranged in kind of a confusing way. This is actually a red light, but um, you know, uh, it, it's also a no right turn on red. Okay, so it is actually obeying the no right turn on red, so that's good. Previously, uh, that was kind of spotty. Okay, now the light's green, but we have some pedestrians coming on the right side, so it's being very cautious of them. There's also a guy crossing the street over there. Wow, just beautiful. Okay, here's a guy crossing the street on the other side. It offset uh, over to the right side to avoid them. That was very smart. So in the past, it might have like slammed on the brake, which is kind of a stupid way to respond, slamming on the brake and stopping in the middle of the road until they cross. What it did kind of moving over to increase the time between the intersection of the pedestrian and the car and allow the car to continue, that was very smart. It's really happening. It's starting to work. And not just work, no safety related disengagements, but be comfortable too. Okay, here we got a ton of traffic approaching. So we're gonna have to wait for all of this traffic to pass before we complete our left turn. Hope we don't get stuck here in the intersection. But I like that it did get into the intersection so it's asserting that we can make our left. Oh, here's the yellow light. Okay, I'm gonna hold down the accelerator. So that wasn't good. That's kind of an issue that I've noticed where, you know, this is like a really common thing in cities is the light turns yellow and you often don't get a chance to go until it turns yellow. So when the light turns yellow and then red, you need to go complete the turn if you're in the intersection. You can't just wait in the middle of the intersection for the next uh, light. So I think the autopilot team knows this, but they're just trying to be conservative and um, you know, not rush on a yellow light when there's people coming. There was also like a guy on a scooter coming, so it wasn't totally clear that it was, uh, it was good to go. So that can be kind of challenging, but that's something I'd like to see them improve on is just the, uh, the yellow light situation. That's really common in urban areas. Okay, now here's a challenging situation. We got some construction on the left and then a stopped Amazon delivery driver on the right. So we go around the construction on the left, go around the stopped driver on the right. I didn't have to touch a thing. Don't you love it? Wow. You literally, you know, don't have to do anything anymore. Your car will just do it all for you. All right, here's a bird. 
sometimes I kind of <laughs> get nervous for the birds, you know, they move out of the way, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I have seen it kind of respond to birds, I think, uh, with the occupancy network. Okay, here's a guy with their door open. And I've also got a lot of pedestrians here, people trying to cross in front of behind the car. Okay, here, this person's getting out of their car, this person's crossing the street. So we're gonna offset, we're gonna slow down. Beautiful. This is a, such a game changer that you can do all this with just cameras and we can ship this into so many cars. It's just so exciting that you can have such good pedestrian detection. Okay, here it looks like it slowed and stopped unnecessarily because it thought that was a traffic light. Whoa, oh my God. That bus was a little bit over the line there. So the car stopped, but that bus was just looking really close to the car. So it's a good thing it stopped. <clears throat> All right, and we're almost to our destination now. It's right around the corner here. You can see the Transamerica Pyramid. Here's a pedestrian taking pictures. No lane markings here. Two directions of traffic. All right, now we're stopping. I see a bunch of pedestrians coming. Okay, they decided to stop and let me go. And here we are. We're at the destination. So there you have it. First drive with FSD Beta 1146, zero takeovers, one accelerator press to get it to go through in a, uh, a yellow light. But other than that, a uh, pretty perfect drive. So, bravo Tesla team. This is amazing. I can't wait to see what's next. This is just the start and Elon says he's testing the Alpha V12. So go ahead, subscribe to FSD Beta, buy FSD, if you want to use my uh, referral link, you can get three free months of full self-driving when you order any Tesla. And man, the deals on some of these Teslas are getting really good. People have no clue how affordable they're getting. So use my link, I'll show it on the screen, get three free months of full self-driving, and uh, let me know how, FS how FSD is working in your areas. And thanks again to our sponsor, Abacus AI. Go check out their product if you want to train your own ML models. Uh, it's just an incredible product. I've really been loving using it myself. And on my Twitter profile, I have a video of how I trained a, a custom chat LLM, fine-tuned, and open-source model using their platform. 